Hello everyone. Uh, here is a problem uh, from sequences and series. We have been uh, given the general expression of a sequence uh, with the uh, a nth terms expression given to us and we have been asked to find the uh, sum of the series uh, from um, the first term till the 25th term. As you can see that the general term is um, minus 2 upon 4 n square minus 16 n plus 15. Uh, so let us see how do we solve this problem. An important call out that I would make over here is, you know, not all problems is uh, problems of uh, of a series summation uh, is a straightforward problem of adding um, of using a formula. Let's say you use the formula of a sum of an arithmetic progression um, or the sum of a geometric progression or to some extent an, a harmonic prog progression as well. Some of these uh, series are special in nature and we have to understand the pattern that is involved uh, to solve so, so to solve that problem. We will discuss many such problems uh, to understand the special nature of such series uh, and we'll understand how to solve them. Today's is, uh, is, is, is one such example uh, and we will do many such problems like those. So um, let us deep dive into the um, solution of the problem. So the nth uh, term of the expression is minus 2 upon 4 n square minus 16 n plus 15. As you can see that the denominator is a quadratic polynomial and we can always factorize a quadratic polynomial if there is a, a factorization possible. You can see that the first term of the quadratic polynomial is 4 and, and the last term is 15. So the product is uh, 60. I would rather say plus 60, positive 60. And the middle term is minus 16n, which means <clears throat> we can find, uh, let us try and try and see if we can find, um, if we can factorize this. As, as, he, as you can see, uh, minus 10 and minus 6 are a good fit because the sum is minus 16 and the product is plus uh, 60. So I've just factorized this um, um, and I need not go into the details of factorization because if you are doing a problem at this level, I'm sure you know how to factorize a, a quadratic polynomial by splitting the middle term method. <clears throat> and now um, you can see that uh, the general uh, expression of an has become minus 2 upon uh, minus uh, minus 2 upon 2 n minus 5 times 2 n minus 3. <clears throat> now, when you get an expression like this, right, um, uh, to, to further solve this, it is a good idea to split this even further into two terms um, so that, you know, you can see a pattern emerging between those two terms. It may sometimes be uh, even a little bit more complicated than this. Uh, this expression is pretty simple, I would say, wherein, you know, I can... Um, express minus 2 upon 2n minus 5 times 2n minus 3 as a upon 2n minus 5 plus b upon 2n minus 3, we will find out uh, what that a and b uh, is going to be. So I have written minus 2 upon 2n minus 5 and 2n minus 3 as a upon 2n minus 5 plus b upon 2n minus 3. And, um, you know, those who have uh, studied even higher level of mathematics, uh, um, and have done integration, you would have so solved some of uh, some problems in integrations using partial fractions. And it's very similar to that. I'm trying to find out that A and B value uh, to just, you know, split uh, this general expression into a more, more simpler form. So as you can see, I'm saying um, minus 2 upon 2n minus 5 times 2n minus 3 is, let's say, some value of A upon 2n minus 5 plus some value of b upon 2 and minus 3. So how do I find that value of a and b? So just um, let us focus on the right hand side. I've just taken the LCM and, you know, um, I get 8 times 2 and minus 3 plus b times 2 and minus 5 in the numerator. Now what I've done in the next step is I have, you know, brought all the terms of n together and all the terms um, for the integer minus 2 together, right? Look, what would equal to my for the integer minus 2? Which, which in other words means that a plus b is going to be 0 because we do not have any term uh, with, related to n in the numerator on the left-hand side of the expression. But minus 3a and um, minus 5b would be equal to minus 2 because those that's the only numeric expression uh, that... Um, that would equate to the integer on the numerator on the left hand side. 
So now I get two equations, uh, a plus b equal to zero, which means a is equal to minus b, and minus three a minus five b is equal to minus two. So solving uh, this, um, um, these two, uh, you know, linear equations and two variables, I would say, I would get b is equal to one and a is equal to minus one. So my expression now um, becomes minus two upon two n minus five, two n and times two n minus three is equal to minus one upon two n minus five plus one upon two, two n minus three. So my general term uh, now uh, can be written very simply as minus one upon two n minus five plus one upon two n minus three. Now, when you have, um, you know, um, uh, the general term of a of a sequence in this um, in this format, uh, try to write down um, at least five to six terms um, of the sequence to see if there is a pattern that that is emerging. So let us see, right? I am just putting the value of n equal to one and my T1 comes across as minus one upon minus three plus one upon minus one. My T2 comes across as minus one upon minus one plus one upon one. T3 is minus one upon one plus one upon three. So far, you know, it's, it's not very intuitive or it's not very apparent on what the pattern is. But if I do T4, right? Look at the first term of my uh, T4. It's minus one by one upon three. And look at the first, uh, second term of T3. It's plus one by three, right? So let's say if I add T3 and T4, you know, one upon three and minus one upon three would get canceled out. In fact, look at look carefully. If you add T2 and T3, um, the second term of T2, one, one upon one, uh, and the first term of T3, minus one upon one, would also cancel out. Go further, right? Look at T1 and T2, right? If you add T1 and T2, the second term of T1, the first term of T2 would cancel out because they would just they are just positive and negative versions of the same expression. Um, so similarly, T5, look at T5. This first term of T5 and the second term of T4 are exactly opposite to each other uh, in terms of sign, right? So so on and so forth. So if you look at the T n minus one term. Uh, look at the second term. It actually is plus one upon two n minus five because two n minus uh, two times n minus one minus three is two n minus five. And look at t n. The first term is minus two n minus five. So in fact, if you add from t one to t n, you would uh, get the sum of s n. You would get s n. That is sum of n terms. And that actually would be um, the first term of t one. And the last term of T n, because everything else in between would, would get cancelled out. So once you um, so that's what I've written here. Add sequentially, and your S n would become minus one upon minus three plus one upon two n minus three. So you know minus one upon minus uh, three is actually one upon three. So if you just simply put twenty five for um, finding the sum of first twenty five now. You would get one upon three plus one upon forty-seven. Just solve this, and you would get fifty upon one forty-one. So that's that's the that's the answer uh, to this question, and I think it's option one. So that's how you would solve it. Thank you so much for listening. If you like my channel, subscribe, and if you like this video, um, I would appreciate if you like it. Thank you. Bye bye.